All right. For the third time, first guest I've had on for three times. Welcome back to back to the podcast, Derek Graybill. Thank you, Jody. I, I mean, I requested this, so I don't know if that's <laughs> uh, for your doing or mine, but I'll, I'll take it. I'm happy to be back. Well, anyone who hasn't gone back and listened, actually, maybe don't go back and listen, because when I listen to my first episodes, I like cringe, but Derek was kind enough to be my first guest, and it set us on our way all the way back of August of 2020 was that first episode, and that Derek was recommended by Jaden Majenski, who I don't think is doing much bending these days, but uh, and that's how I got hooked up with Derek, so it's uh, been a long time. So... You've been up to a whole bunch of stuff, but you know what I want to ask first is I never, <laughs> I never, I didn't start asking what the first time you saw someone bend a piece of steel was until after I got a few episodes going. So before we get into anything else, I want to know who was the first person you saw bend some steel? That's, I, I thought I answered that on episode one. Maybe I didn't. Um, oh, really? Let's see. I can't quite remember if it was. I think you may have asked how I got into steel bending, which is how we That's got probably what it was. Board and gator grip. I'm trying to think who the first person would have been. I'm sure it was some YouTube video I saw on, um, on grip board. I mean, the first person like in person who like was memorable was Aaron Corcoran. Right. So I'll that one. And I, I'm sure at some point, I can't remember if it was before or after I started bending steel that I watched like the old world strongest man. But yeah. I think later. Cause I think that was in like my, college days i got into the older world's strongest mans and i started steel bending at 14. Mm -hmm. um i'll just say aaron corcoran like he invited me over to his little garage dungeon gym uh when i when there was like a meet there was like a, um, a location thread on grip board like where are you at and i saw wow. this other dude in tucson so i was like oh hey you know let's let's meet up let's train you can teach me some stuff hopefully my mom had to drop me off because i was 14 obviously <laughs> that's funny um, and yeah, he taught me that was, I bent three sixteenths round. That was my, I, I got stopped at three sixteenths square. Like all yep. of this, this genetic talent I've been <laughs> I'm, I'm just shit. It's 15 years of hard work. Um, yeah. But yeah. So probably Aaron. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. And I've been actually for the last probably six months, I've been, I went back to 77. I've watched every world's strongest man, including some of the heats, uh, I'm up to 2016 now. I've watched every single one. <laughs> just like, just like at, bed, at nighttime going to bed, I'll just throw one on. And I've, I've watched every single one. So even the early uh, crazy steel bending over the head and with the towels and all that. So many injuries. I don't remember how many people tore pecs, but at least one. Yeah, it's scary. Not, not well advised. <laughs> <laughs> but um, all right. So... I do want to talk about some other stuff that you've done, but let's just get right into the uh, the gold nail saga. So okay. for anyone that doesn't know, Derek has a little bit of history with Iron Mind. We'll get into that quickly. Um, but uh, basically, we've had some recent events, and that's why we wanted to have Derek come on to kind of explain what has gone down. And th the fact is, is the unthinkable has actually been done. So Go ahead, Derek. Let's talk about it. Well, for, first of all, for the record, um, Alex Klimovich did do the gold before me. Granted, he did an open package on video. I don't know for a fact it wasn't like the old spiral golds. I'm surprised he never started, but just to get that out of the way, I'm not the first person to ever been under certain conditions, but I'm the second and the one who in, instigated a rule change. So I'll take credit. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll go all the way back to the start because I'm going to share this with some of my non-bending friends. And I want them to kind of know what the, the fuck this is about. Yeah. So in, um, obviously started bending in 2006, 2007, I think it was early 07. Um, so I, you know, worked from three sixteenths round to the red nail cert, which was done on, I believe it was Valentine's day, 2009. So I was uh, 16 years old, 16 and a half. As far as I'm aware, I'm still the youngest person to ever do an official cert, but I'm not positive on that because I haven't really kept up with the latest lists. Um, but so Aaron Corcoran was my judge at that point, did it in his little garage dungeon uh, with a couple of other old OGs from Grip. Uh, Wes Pert was there. I don't know if anyone even knows who that guy is anymore, but he was also a young like phenom, but he you know went off and did like strongman or powerlifting or something. Um, so, yeah, I did that cert. It was like eight seconds. Relatively proud of that. I think Aaron was one of the only people that did it faster. I think he did about six flat. 
Um, and then I don't remember exactly when my name got taken off the list. I was trying to dig through the old Iron Mind forums and find it. Obviously, that um, thread is no longer there, and Gripboard has too much stuff to like sort through. Yeah, uh, I think it was like 2010, 2011. So I think it was before I left Grip for good at that point in time. Um, Randy and I were like, there was a discussion on the Iron Mind forums about steel and variants. Uh, at that point, I think I was reading on some like slightly more recent threads. I feel like Randy might have changed his stance on this. It's hard to really say. But um, at that point, Randy firmly believed that steel did not vary. His grippers uh -huh. were all the same. His bolts were all the same. His bends were all the same. He just believed that steel was inherently consistent. It has to be. I, mean, I don't know why he would think that, but that was his belief system. Yeah. And so myself and Josh Dale, um, and there were a few other benders involved, you know, got on him about it. We're like, hey, that's not true. Like steel inherently varies. Here's evidence on the Crayline system. Here's evidence on Aaron's bending um, certification or right. calibrations, excuse me. And a lot of that stuff was from Eric Nolfeld. Um, so he's, you know, corrected him and he did not take kindly to that. You know, Randy does not like being corrected. He's a, a 70 year old with a PhD. <laughs> in something um, <laughs> at that point, you know, whatever age he was. Um, so he didn't take time to that. My name and along with Josh's, and I think there were a couple others were removed from the red nail list. I've actually heard since then and, and during this all, whole saga that actually I guess people were removed from the three list too. I think there were other people that were removed from the red nail list. Like he's just a power hungry son of a bitch. He doesn't <laughs> like when you, what do you say anything back to him? Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then I just kind of left it alone. I didn't really care because I mean, I had my name on other lists. It wasn't really like a relevant thing to me. And shortly after that, I left uh, Grip to go on and do like powerlifting, strongman, and kind of you know put my dip my toes into every strength field in some capacity, arm wrestling, etc. Um, so that so the original issue was actually just because you confronted him about variance in the steel. It would. I was remembering that it was due to like difference in wraps or something like that. It was just, just cause of the, okay. Purely the steel thing. I mean, at that point, his, his uh, rules were clear. I mean, I'd, I'd never have liked the fact that there's no delineation between the old list and the new list. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember who the last person to do it was with open wraps, open time limit. And no uh -huh. one does because there's no delineation on the list, but no, it wasn't about that. It was about um, just me knowing for a fact that steel varies and him disagreeing with that and not liking that he was being questioned i don't yeah. know if he knew or it mattered that i was you know 18 at that time or whatever but he didn't like that i was questioning his authority oh. yeah i mean that was my experience with it was um i had trained on red nails their youtube video of me doing it i uh, sent away for the package whatever came was like way harder that I couldn't even at the time complete in doubles like and I was like well this sucks like so I sent it back you know really kind and was just like these aren't what I had bought from you to train on like this is clearly different it looks different this and that and he was like all right well send me a sample so I sent him what I had and he got back to me and just said, uh, no there's no difference these are the same and I was like all right and I just I, sort of like lost motivation to even do that and i mean you know frankly iron mind is pretty much obsolete when there's things on the table like haritos site and if anyone wants to get on haritos roster which is actually way cooler than iron mind use promo code cheers save 10 percent, support the show anyway so variants in the steel you get kicked off the red nail list did you make mm -hmm. any stink about it at the time or or were you quiet i can't imagine you were quiet um, about it I was a little quieter then than I am now. Maybe not. I don't know. It kind of depended on the, the mood. Um, I, I think there was a stink about it on grip board. I think okay. at that point, I, I probably was banned off Iron Mind just knowing Randy. I, I don't really don't remember that. I tried <laughs> to find my old uh, logins and both of my emails, which were then the only emails I had at that point in time, did not exist on his site. So either they phased out or he like permanently blocked me. Who knows? Did um, he engage on grip board or, or was that just on Iron Mind forum? As far as I remember, he never has been active on Gripboard. There is like an Iron Mind sub forum, and I think he sponsors it in some capacity. Okay. Really not positive on financial support, but I um, yeah, I don't think he ever had a uh, a handle or engaged on Gripboard. So this okay. was on the Iron Mind uh, bending forums, which are now just as obsolete as Iron Mind. But I went <laughs> on there, and the last post is 2017. Yeah, <laughs> there's been like 30 total posts since they were. Uh, 
had formed in 2011 or 2012 no, mm-hmm. before that. anyway um and there's been a history of sort of like sketchy stuff with them right i mean like the the joe kinney or whatever the dude's name is that closed the four supposedly there's like there's definitely like weird stuff in the history of that company right yeah, I don't know much about the Joe Kinney in relation to Randy. Um, I know there's a lot of people that don't believe Joe Kinney's four was actually a, a, the strength of a four because yeah. that was back when there were no rules. You just did your own gripper from home. There wasn't like an open package. Yeah. There wasn't anything like that. There were no, I don't even know if there were in-person judges. I think there might have been. That's a little before my time. But uh, essentially the theory is or the um, speculation is that he foot stamped foot stomped his gripper or chest crushed it to oblivion like essentially his number four was probably around as hard as a three and a half and uh-huh. he deep set the fuck out of it that's the what i know of the saga back then um i don't know if you know randy was involved in that in any capacity um, i thought i had read some something like they had they were standing by that cert or something like that i just went down a hole one day reading about i don't know how much of it's current what do you mean standing by the cert like versus it being like redundant. like iron mind was backing the legitimacy of that uh cert oh i mean that wouldn't surprise me i mean he yeah. was the first person on the four list like he's this famous grip guy to some extent um so you know obviously that'd be like questioning brookfield cert you know mm-hmm. kenny would never or not sorry not kenny randy would never go back on that cert because he's the the founder of the list more or less right 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 um yeah so anyway over the last, you know, when we, when we've had you on the show before, you would kind of drop little hints here or there about your, you know, issues with Iron Mind and everything. So bring us up to speed about present day. So you decided to really take on the gold now. Yeah. So after I uh, cut down the 12, nine and got number one on Haritos list, cause that was the actual goal in my life, not the gold nail. Right. Um, I, I would chase the gold kind of like a side quest, which makes me feel a little bad for all the people who have like the red nail is their their big goal i mean a that shouldn't be your big goal like you know contribute to a site that actually supports vendors right but i get why it's a huge goal for people like it's the the one that people outside of bending have heard of because i you know no one outside of bending or grip has heard of fbbc or harito or etc cetera, etc cetera. but people have heard of iron mind because of its association with world charms man you know all that yep. But I feel kind of bad for those people because I really like ruined it for everybody <laughs> in a way. Um, but, you know, I mean, in another way, Randy really ruined it for everybody. So I- I'll pull up my emails just so I can read you the I'm going to be as, transform- as transparent as I can be. I'm mean, actually going to yes. post these screenshots on my Instagram once we get finished. I just didn't want to until we had this podcast. Um, okay. So on January 30th, I sent an email to sales at ironmind.com. Um, so I didn't have Randy's email at that point. I said, dear Dr. Randy Strassen, I would like to formally request to be the first ever certified gold nail vendor. I'm located in Tucson, Arizona, but I'd like to travel to this year's Arnold Expo in Columbus, Ohio from March 4th to 6th. Do you think you could coordinate a judge? I'm not sure if you have contacts at Rogue, but a spot that record breakers would be cool. If not, I could just meet someone on one of those days. I would be leaving by Sunday night, so I need to be done by 2 p.m. Sunday. Signed, a former Red Nail roster member, Derek Graybill. <laughs> which is totally legitimate email yeah it's totally legitimate there's there's some snark there and what i'll say about all of these emails like i didn't start obviously as we've discussed with the respect for randy like for me respect is earned not given randy's never earned my respect but there was an email he sent where my respect level went from zero to negative a thousand Uh (laughs) and i'll and i'll share that with you shortly and that's when shit really ramped up okay Um, so then I got an email back from Melissa Galpin, who is, I guess, one of his errand girls or something. Um, that was just kind of like a, I'm sure everyone's got this email. Dear Mr. Graybill, thanks for your email about certifying, following his link to our website, read the rules, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Uh, please don't hesitate to ask any questions. You can confirm you read and understand the process. Please let me know. Look forward to hearing from you. So I said, dear Miss Galpin, although my name is not on the Red Nail roster, I did previously certify and I'm quite familiar with the rules. I'm ready <laughs> to proceed the attempt. Please let me know if a judge can be obtained for the Arnold as I want to confirm before I book my travel. Um, is Dr. Randy involved in certifications anymore? Given the fact that this cert has never been attempted in our personal history, I would really like to hear from him. Best, Derek Graybell. <laughs> 
<laughs> then I have to find Randy. So he only sent me one email, as I think I may have mentioned recently on uh, Instagram. Okay. So she forwarded that email to him. And he said, Derek, why was your name removed from the Red Nail roster? Thank you, Randall Strassen. Okay. <laughs> That's a stupid fucking question. <laughs> Whether you remember from me from a decade ago or not, which I think he does, because that seems like something Randy would remember. That's a stupid fucking question. I didn't ask for name being removed. That's for goddamn sure. Right. Like, no one would. I mean, regardless of your stance, I mean, until until David Wigren, you know, bless up Wiggy. Um, yeah. But, you know, no one would ask to be removed from that list because it still was historical yeah. to an extent. Like, I was proud to be on it. I was the youngest bender. I, I may or may not still be unofficially. Uh -huh. um, but that was just a really stupid email. And then my response, which you never responded to, was, hey, Randy, long time no speak. I do not know the answer to that. I have no control over the list and certainly wouldn't ask to be removed. I don't think the others requested removal either. Uh -huh. <laughs> How are we doing how to judge? If you get Ode Od Howden to do it, I would be honored. If not, I'm assuming there are several qualified judges that will be in attendance. Best, Derek Graybill. I don't think I signed that one sarcastically. No, I did not. Um, so I never got a response to that. That was on February 1st. Okay. Everything else has been from an Aaron, Aaron boy or Aaron girl, I guess I should say. Um, so then the response from Melissa, dear Mr. Graybill, thank you for confirming that you've read the rules and understand how to qualify. Um, I think this is another token email on the gold, Ironman gold nail. I forwarded your inquiry to Dr. Strawson, Dr. Strawson. <laughs> as, as part of our certification process, we request that you kindly complete the attached pre-certification questionnaire. Please also send a video of you bending the gold nail according to the rules. We will review your completed pre-certification questionnaire and video promptly and be back in touch with you for the next steps. Thank you again. We look forward to hearing from you. Okay. Um, so one thing I have to disclose, which may be obvious, I guess, as these emails are coming out, I requested the gold nail cert before I had bent the gold nail. Uh -huh. That was my level of confidence. Okay. I, I didn't need to bend it to know I could bend it. Yeah, uh, I, this I'm, I know I always sound cocky. I feel like a lot of people probably hate me by now. Uh, <laughs> it took me four sessions in imps to bend the gold from my first session in imps in years to doing it was four total sessions. Um, I just want to mention that casually. Uh, so Miss Galpin, so I had to wait till I actually finished the gold to send this back. <laughs> Nine day delay. Uh, Ms. Delpin, I have attached the questionnaire and below is the private link to my gold nail according to the certification conditions. As I said, I sent them all without audio. Um, I was wondering about that, actually, because <laughs> when I watched it and I was just listening to your commentary on it, I was crying, laughing, thinking <laughs> that this dude just like gets this video and it's just like your commentary over bending it. I was just like. And then I think I saw in the pictures on your Instagram that one had no audio. And I was like, oh, he must have sent that one. But I was thinking you sent the one with your voice, like, in it. And I was just, like, laughing so hard thinking about that. No, I had to do a video editor to delete audio from the whole clip. So I was like, <laughs> oh, well, you know, I don't want to I don't want to poke the bear too hard right now. But I was just like, I probably shouldn't have just said any of that in the bend. But y'all know me by now. Like, that's just who I am as a, as a competitor. <laughs> so like, yeah. I just could not say that shit during the, the video. Um, so yeah, I, I made one without audio, but I'm pretty sure like because of the way I was turned to the camera, I'm pretty sure you can read my lips, say, fuck you, Randy, oh, you can. <laughs> which I'll, which you'll, you'll see in the email they sent to me. They probably saw that because the video that was without audio, he's the only one that has the link to that. And it was watched nine times. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure they rewatched and tried to read the lips a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> that's so, pretty funny image to think of. Oh my god! So I said, so here's the link to my gold nail according to the certification conditions. The package of new gold nails was opened on camera. This is obviously the package I bought from him separate. Um, according to my time, the bend was exactly one minute and was certainly done inside of two inches a few seconds prior. I did not have a timer as my wife was at work, or I would have been more positive of time. Please let me know when there is a judge assigned. My wife and I are trying to coordinate a trip to the Arnold. So please let me know if a judge is available as soon as possible so we can both travel. Um, a few days go by. Dear Mr. Graybell, thank you for submitting your pre-certification materials. Your video has been reviewed and we would like you to repeat your attempt. One, okay. there was no clear demonstration that these were iron mine bending pads. So I'll, I'll, I'm gonna stop here. 
Okay. So apparently there is precedent for this. I, I forgot to show in, in their defense. I still think this is a bullshit rule because while what, what other, you know, trifold 12 by 12 blue, blue iron, yeah. like Cordura wraps did I make up in order yeah. to cheat this cert? Sure. But apparently it happened with um, one of Jan's friends in Germany. He was telling about it. Uh, that somebody did have to redo their pre-certification video because they didn't show the little iron mine tag. So tag, stupid, right. but I guess there's precedent and I, I suppose I understand the reasoning for it. Again, I don't I don't even understand why there's a pre-certification process. I know. No one else has that. <laughs> so, yeah. And like if if I still demonstrated the ability to do it, just send the fucking nails. Yeah. <laughs> this next one's funny. Please submit your video with the audio as there were concerns about potentially unsportsmanlike behavior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm guilty of that. I, I don't think there's sportsmanship in the rules, though, which is what I pointed out to her in the subsequent email. So I don't uh, think that's, that's legitimate either. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I understand their feelings were hurt. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so both of these points should be easy for you to address. And as a courtesy, we are sending you three gold nails and a set of iron mine bending pads. You can submit another pre-certification video. We understand your interest in booking your flight to Columbus. But you might want to make this decision independent of whether you would be having it, whether or not you would be having an attempt to officially bend the gold nail just to be on the safe side. So, I mean, I'm going to get to this in my, my subsequent reading of emails, but I'll take a break here. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, that's, that's horseshit. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous that they're sending me, they sent me golds and wraps yeah. with the expectation that I would do another video opened on camera. Uh, and in the subsequent emails, what I'm going to get to into is they were requiring me to use the new brand new Iron Mind Wrap Pads. Right. As all of us in bending know, Iron Mind Pads perfect. take a while to be conditioned. Like those things do not they're like a pair of brand new dress shoes. You get them new out of the box. Those things fucking hurt. Yeah. Fucking hurt. So, you know, you, that's just not, and there's no rule. There's no rule about sportsmanship. There's no, no rule about opening pads on camera or using brand new pads. There never has been before. Right. Now they're, even though it's not really clear in the new rules that you have to use the new pads, it just says we're going to send you new pads. Nowhere in the rules. I don't know if you guys read this. Nowhere in the rules does it say you must use the new pads we sent you to bend the thing. It just says we're going to send you new pads. I'm like, all right, fucking great. Send me another donation of pads. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. You have any questions before I go on to the next one? Anything you want to elaborate on? I don't think so. And I was thinking about my pre certification. I don't think I showed the tags. Like, I don't, I think that's inconsistent on their part, too. Like, I think I just showed the nail. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. And apparently it did happen before me. So it's not purely a hatred of me in full yeah. description. Um, so next email, Miss Galpin, darn it. I completely forgot to show the iron mine tag on the wraps. In all fairness, they're clearly trifold 12 by 12 blue cordura wraps on video. Is that not sufficient for pre-certification? Clearly I have demonstrated the strength making it worth your time to send three nails and iron mine wraps at your expense. What difference is it to use those for an official certification versus another pre-certification? Yeah, the fact that it's just all the pre is like a little it's silly. It's just silly. Yeah, agreed. Um, and again, like I said in the email, if they're going to send this shit anyway, why not just send it to the Arnold where I wanted to cert and we can do yep. the same thing there. Um, regarding unsportsmanlike behavior, I reviewed the rules very thoroughly prior to the bend and since, and I have not seen anything regarding unsportsmanlike conduct or conduct in any regard. I attended it fired up while bending, and I do not feel this should be a reason for disqualification. Please let me know if I need to censor myself on the actual attempt. Regarding pre-certification do-over, am I able to use my current wraps and nails? I do not wish to wait for the package to arrive, plus my current wraps are nicely broken in. Can I just redo the video with showing the tag and being a good sportsman? Or am I expected to open this whole package on camera and use the nails and wraps? Best, Derek Graybell. Um, <laughs> just, just getting more and more ridiculous. That's why I just kept saying they're making up new rules. They literally were making up new rules for me as they go. Yeah. Uh, and obviously she's just the errand person. I'm sure yeah. in, in her ear the entire, I'm sure they're forwarding emails <laughs> back and forth on what she should say. I'd love to see that correspondence. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, 
Um, Dear Mr. Graybill, it's not a problem and we'd like you to do this again so that everything is perfect. The package is already on the way to you and we would like to see this done as described, please. So open the package on camera and have at it. Also being enthusiastic and fired up is fine and we are confident that you can understand the difference between that and unsportsmanlike conduct. So this should not pose a problem. <laughs> the tracking number is blah and can be tracked on usps.com. On your official attempt, please also plan to use the wraps we sent you to avoid the possibility of someone subsequently challenging the legitimacy of your wraps and the bend. Good luck and have fun. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll pause again before the next one. I mean, it's ridiculous they're asking me to use brand new wraps on camera. Right. It's also ridiculous that they're asking me to use the same wraps on the actual cert, because how would you even know the difference? I, I mean, well, if I, the way I interpret that is is two ways, and they're both not good. Because one <laughs> is that, that one is they're so clueless about bending, they don't really understand that the difference between a broken in set of wraps and a and a new set of wraps, or they do understand that and they don't want you to cert, so they're they're making it harder. So it's it's one of these two things, and they're both not good. I was automatically assuming the second, but you, I always forget about the fact that Randy knows nothing about bending. Um, I, I forget to assume the least him. So yeah, you're right. It very well could be that they just assume those are the same and they want to be extra legitimate, I guess, and therefore right. want me to bend everything on camera. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll, there's, there's another piece to this puzzle and I, <laughs> I actually forgot to bring something in from outside. I may have to like have you put you on a quick pause and go get it just for oh, this. That's fine. But we'll we'll get to that. Um, where's my next email? Okay, dear Miss Galpin, why can we not make this this the official attempt? I know there is a local judge who had my red nail certification back in two thousand nine. This just seems like an outlandish amount of work for a pre-certification. I have already sent a video of me bending the, a gold according to the rules. There's no rule for pre-certification. There wasn't at the time, now there is. Yeah. Or official certification about using brand new wraps. As far as I know, no one has ever been required to use brand new wraps in any red nail certification. Your wraps need at least warm-ups to break them in. So if you would like me to open the package on camera, it would be, it would be roughly an hour long video between chalking of my wraps and warm-ups. My wraps were bought within the last year. You can check my order order history if you would like and have not been tampered with outside of regular chalk and regular use. I have read and reread the list of rules and no part of this process is listed. The entire pre-certification concept is not even listed on your website. I kindly request that we make the new wraps and seal nails the official attempt. I understand the desire for legitimacy for something that's never been done before. If you would still like another pre-certification video, I will do so with the current wraps and bars clearly showing the Ironman logo and that the wraps have not been modified in any way. Is this agreeable to all parties? Please feel free to have Randall call me at blank if you would like to discuss further. Best, Derek Graybell. Uh-huh. So, yeah. And then the response to that... Oh, actually, so they never responded to that. That was on February 18th. I went up getting the nails on February 18th, the afternoon. That was a Friday. Okay. Saturday, the week. So I'd done my bend on February 12th. My current training re regimen, just so you know, I I've decreased intensity a lot just because that was just destroying my elbows and hands. So now I only do max effort bends like every three to four, sometimes even like six weeks. Yeah. Uh, Otherwise, it's like volume at 70, 80% and weight training. Um, so essentially, because of this debauchery, I decided to do max effort bends two weeks in a row. Um, so then here's my email just to give you some needed context. Hey, y'all, right. we have two problems. One, there were no nails in the package you sent. Oh, God. You cannot make this shit up. There were <laughs> no nails in the package. Either it was messed up in packing or somehow they fell out in transit. There was a very small hole in the package, but honestly, I find it hard to believe they would have fallen out of that. It's only big enough to fit a Sharpie through. Um, two, I tried bending two from the same stock as last week. And between the flu I had this last week, not COVID luckily, and new wraps, I tore my finger open and did not succeed. 
I can send the whole video if you'd like, it will verify what I said above, but it's obviously it was not successful, so I'm not sure the purpose. How would you like to proceed? Would you like the video? I know I can succeed in an official attempt because I already did one. I just forgot to show the wrap logo on camera. If you'd like to send me a new package to open on camera for another pre-certification, I'll need about three weeks total, but I'll do it. I'll also offer if you will just look, if you will just get a judge, I will pay him for their time, win or lose. You set the price. We're all just making up rules as we go along anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is where my emails got real shitty. Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, that's a lot of back and forth over like a pre-certification. I, I can understand that. Yeah, exactly. And like doing, so I mean, between, as I said in that email, between that week, I went up pretty sick. I don't know if it was like steel sickness, like, you know, CNS sickness from yeah. didn't miss that hype that, that Saturday, or if it was real sickness, it wasn't COVID luckily. Um, but I was pretty down and out until like Friday. I didn't train at all that week. And then uh -huh. Saturday, I was feeling pretty good. So I was like, well, fuck it, let's go. Uh, and then also with the wraps being brand new. Now, the video literally was an hour and a half long. I had the wrap, the, the video camera recording while I chalked up the wraps. I was, I wanted to send this so badly. I'm so mad I didn't succeed <laughs> because it's so like, it's so subtly petty in like the best way. <laughs> because I, I, I chalked the wraps out the package. And that was when I was like, there's no nails in here. Uh -huh. uh, and then I wrapped them around a bar, let them sit while I was doing my squats for warm ups. Mm -hmm. I like came back and like talked to the camera and was like, Hey, you guys got a book? I hope you guys have a book. It's going to be a long video. And then, <laughs> and then I did that. I proceeded to keep doing that. I kept chalking the wraps, did like my warm up bends, chalked the fuck out of the wraps between each bend. Um, at one point in the video, I was like, Guys, I just love squats. I've been reading this great book about squats called The Squat oh, Bible okay. from Dr. Aaron Horshig. Best book about squats I've ever read in my life. Dr. Aaron Horshid is a genius. I said that on camera and I'm so mad. I didn't get to send it to Randy. It's oh, like, man. you know the intent there. Yeah. You're talking shit just subtly. <laughs> I, was, I was being a good sportsman, but I got my jabs, my jabs in. Um, so I'm really mad that I, that I failed. But uh, um, yeah, so I was going to bring the package. I'll post a picture on Instagram, I guess, unless okay. you wait to get it. But the whole... There's two holes in the package. So like if they went all out, but there, there's a literally no way that three gold nails could have fit through this hole without sure. someone forcing them through it. Like they could yeah. not have occurred in transit. Yeah. So yeah. That, means that they intentionally sent a package with holes in it so that my pre-certification could not be successful, even if I had bent it. Because uh -huh. even if I had bent it, they would have said, oh, well, there weren't golds in there, our mistake. We must have messed up the packing because the packing slip said three golds. Yeah. We messed up the packing. We'll send you another one. Do it again next week. Yeah. We're intentionally delaying my certification or pre-certification or whatever the fuck you want to call this bullshit. <laughs> so that, you know, I, I, A, couldn't start at the Arnold or B, would give up and never cert ever. And then C, they wound up just changing their rules because they didn't want me to cert ever. So there's still more emails. Do you have a question? Uh, you want to stop for a second? No, I'm, I'm following along. I think we're good. I do want to talk about uh, your training um, leading up to the 12.9 uh, and stuff like that. But let's save that after we conclude the, the gold nail saga. Let's do it. So then um, there was no response from February 19th to February 23rd. And I think it was on the, hold on, it was on the 22nd that he announced the moratorium. Right. On, due to growing concerns yeah, I like that. <laughs> Legitimacy, growing concerns. Yeah. Where did the pause? Who had a concern? Nobody. Nobody yeah. had the world concern besides you, Randy. Um, so February twenty third, the day after that thing came out, I sent, and all these emails had Randy CC on them. By the way, just he never responded. They were he was always yeah. CC. Hey y'all, just wanted to check in because I hadn't heard back. My cert process was started before this moratorium, so I'm assuming this doesn't apply to me. Is that correct? <laughs> just being a wise ass. Either way, I'm excited to be the first name on the gold nail list. So let me know how to best move forward. Would love to prove that I'm strong as a Derek. Uh, D-E-R-R-I-C-K. Yeah. Yeah. Best strong as a Derek. D-E-R-E-C-K. Or E-K. Excuse me. Let's fill my name. Um, again, being a wise ass because that article was so clearly. That, that so was wild. He's such a troll. Like, it's unbelievable to see a 70-year-old with this uh, CEO of a company with this much time on his hands to be an internet troll. Like, unbelievable. Right. Um, so then I got, let's see. 
Dear Mr. Graybill, the moratorium applies to everyone. And if you have now been following along Iron Man's announcements, you know that we expect to be lifted within two weeks. So this should not slow you down. And once the moratorium has been lifted, you're welcome to reinitiate the certification process. Meanwhile, we wish you success in training. Um, I must be losing my spot. Okay. Dear Ms. Galpin and Randy, that seems a bit unfair to me since I had already started the process and proved that I was capable under the old rules. How can I be certain the rules will not change again after pre-certifying on those rules? If I didn't know any better, I would think the rules were changed because of me being ready for the gold nail. The timing certainly seems suspicious. Is it just niftier to have the appearance of exclusivity than an honest cert process? I feel like I'm being discriminated against as a Derek, D-E-R-I-C-K, and isn't the whole point to show that you're as strong as a Derek? Best, the greatest bender of all time. <laughs> <laughs> um, two more emails. Dear Mr. Graybell, your pre-certification attempt was turned down, but when the review is completed and certification reopens, you will have an opportunity to resume the pre-certification process. Our apologies for any confusion. Derek Poundstone is whom we, are, we think of when we say strong as a Derek. Well, that's curious because A, he never been to Steel Bar in his life. Yeah. He still spelled his name wrong because his name is spelled like mine. Yeah. So he didn't put Derek Poundstone or have any reference to him. Yes. He, right. That's just, they're backpedaling. Yeah. Uh, then they sent me to like his Fortissimus poster. Sincerely, Judy, Judy Marius. So now Melissa's gone. I don't know what happened to her. Um, <laughs> I said, Randy, oh no, what happened to Melissa? Did she speak up to you and her name was deleted from the company just as mine was on your list? I hope not. She seemed nice enough. We, the bending community, will never again certify on your lists, mostly because your rules are completely asinine and virtually impossible. Even John Brookfield did not comply with your new rules, and he certainly could not have. I'm sure making even the Red Nails, making the Red Nails certification completely impossible will be great for sales. Best <laughs> Derek Gray area. <laughs> and then I sent the two memes I posted on Instagram to him directly. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> now, did they ever? Yeah. It seemed like they had an issue with you using a clamp too. Did they ever mention anything about that? Because there was like some mention yeah. of like using mechanical means of holding oh, yeah. the wrap down. And yeah, it's in the new rules. Yeah, yeah I, they never mentioned that to me in any capacity. That was just. I don't know if Randy just took offense to that because it's not um, true to the old strong man, grab a rag and, you know, throw right. it around and bend it. Or if it was just about me. Yeah. I mean, the gray bill rule. So they're all tailored off of, you know, my, my attempt more or less, but yeah. uh, my, it's hard to really say, I like, like you said, Rand, they really know nothing about bending. So I think part of it is just that they think, we should all be true to the old time strongman who grabbed a dish towel and threw it on the end and, you know, bent it in a, a show atmosphere inside of 30 seconds or whatever. Sure. And, and get the perspective there, but it's not realistic, nor is it how sports should move. I mean, imagine if there was a powerlifting federation that was like, man, knee wraps and belts and all this stuff is just way too safe we should make everyone go back to lifting in their bare feet with nothing on them at all besides, you know, a, a Greek diaper from the 1700s yeah. or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. My history is not great. You know, imagine like that's the, that's the equivalent here. Like he, yeah. He, switch the barbell to like a cow or whatever, uh, Milo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's have a world's strongest man contest with no belts, no wraps, no sleeves, no chalk, no tacky, yeah. no nothing. And see if anyone gets hurt. Fuck yeah, they're gonna get hurt. Like that's stupid. You're being ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think there's some combination thereof of like his dislike for me and my uh, lack of desire to bow down to his greatness. And um, again, his just holding on to this antiquated concept of uh, bending as it used to be in the 1910s versus how it's evolved to in the 2020s. Right. I mean, anyone. That actually is something now that I've been around and talked to a bunch of people and it's like, there's, there, there's no denying there's a big separation between people that are sort of carry on, carrying on the legacy of old time performing strongmen and then steel bending as a sport. I mean, there, there's, they're just two different things and anyone that 
can bend big steel certainly can wrap up a 60 D nail in a rag and bend it. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Like, and, but the fact is, is doing that with a red nail is hard, you know, like very, very, very hard. And mm -hmm. like these rules are completely out of touch and it just shows just a lack of understanding of what's actually going on in the sport of steel bending. Now yeah. it's, it's the same thing, you know, to, to your point with performing strongman versus, you know, steel bending, it's the same thing performing strongman versus strongman. I mean, mm -hmm. we are the world's strongest man in this analogy and performing strongman is performing strongman. I mean, again, right. there's, you know, Pat Povolitis when he went up on stage. Yeah, obviously you're not going to tattoo the fuck out of your arms and belt up and get all amped for a, a 240 pound stone lift and then, you know, doing stuff on your head or whatever to combination feet. But that's the point, you know, in, in a show, you're going to have a different um, uh, execution of the <laughs> thing. And like you said, in with this high level of steel, you just can't be expected to do it in show conditions. And how right. do you keep replicate show conditions in a gym anyway. I mean, that's not the point. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, especially when it comes to strength sports, there's just a big difference between sort of winning over the lay person, you know, that that's never done this thing. And then being competitive in the sense of, you know, progressing past the entrance level stuff, you know, it's like to impress steel benders, you know, that's like the only steel benders are impressed by the 12.9 to a regular person. That's just, you know, that could be a freaking grade two bolt. They don't know any difference, you know, <laughs> it's like, so it's like, I think there should be a little on, the, at least in this circumstance that we're talking about, at least a knowledge of the two worlds and a respect for steel bending as a sport, because it's not easy. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I agree. And like the thing that made me a little more mad honestly was the um the stuff that chaz posted on instagram stranger grip one i think is instagram handle uh, mm -hmm. that he was talking to randy about suggestions for the rules and and stuff like that and i'm like either either randy's just pandering which is very possible or he maybe he has realized he's wrong like i i don't know where that is coming from I mean, but yeah. obviously on the original moratorium post it said hey reach out to us with rule suggestions yeah that, and no, no one did, like at least no one in the actual steel band community. Maybe he talked to like Brookfield or, or Pat Pavlidis, or I don't know for a fact, he never talked to some old time or, or, or performer. Um, yeah. I'd be curious if he did, but you know, I don't think anyone was actually consulted. Um, I'm sure not. And like I talked to, to Clay, because Clay Edgens, one of the few people on my Instagram who's kind of defending Randy in a way. And, and he Is that right? had a lot of good things to say about Randy. He said that you know, he has consulted him on grip events in the past and consulted him on the arm lifting stuff. And it's just wild to me, this, this disconnect. And I don't know if it's just because, again, I didn't come in with the, uh, the, this attitude uh -huh. or if, you know, and or our past disagreement, or if it's, um, I don't know, but it's just weird. Like if he, if he actually cared about the sport, show it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm not. I'm not going to purchase any more from him anyway. I'm, I'm debating if I want to buy nails for, you know, out of package for like a, another uh, unofficial cert attempt, but um, I don't know. I'll take, I'm taking opinions on that. I don't know if you, you think I should redo the unofficial cert um, or if I should just leave well enough alone and move on with my life. I, I don't know. I'm curious what, what everyone out there thinks. And I'd love to hear opinions in the Instagram. So the one, actually, I was going to ask about that. So the one that's up there is the one that you sent as your pre-certification that was denied because you didn't show the, the labels, right? Yep. Interesting. And okay. it was like right at a minute. So, I mean, you know, you could kind of go on either side if that was truly under a minute. It should have been. If I had been aware of time, it definitely would have been. But, yep. you know, that's the uh, areas of questionability, I suppose. But I also yeah. get it fresh out the, out the package. So, I mean, you really have nothing to, you know, if... If a certain somebody <clears throat> name rhymes with schmadam schmass wants to doubt my legitimacy, my bends, <laughs> I opened the package on camera. So there's really not a lot to doubt there. Uh, <laughs> we almost made it. <laughs> <laughs> Elbow drive hasn't even been brought up once yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, we can talk about elbow drive though. Man. Yeah, actually, I do. So. Anything else you want to say on the gold nail before we move on to actually like 
what got you to this next level of the cut down 12.9 and, and so forth? And honestly, like the drill now, I'm just, I'm a little sad. I'm a little angry. Like I, I wanted that spot in history and yeah. I wanted, you know, I wanted Josh and Tom to be able to do it too. And I mean, Josh was right on my tails. I was, I was honestly part of what maybe pushed to do it now. Cause I've kind of been wavering on doing it, like thinking about doing it. And then I saw Josh was really close when he like, I think it was when he wobbled one in imps and I was like, oh shit, if I want to be first, I got to beat Josh now. So yeah. like, I'm sad and I'm angry for us. And also obviously all the people that were close to attempting the red and had that on their bucket list. Sure. I just want to you know, say to anyone who did like support people who bend steel, like buy from Josh. I'm debating opening my own cert thing. I might, when I have a little more time, mm -hmm. um, next couple months or something, um, buy from Josh, buy from Devin, buy from Harito, yeah. obviously. Um, yeah. if he is kind of wishy-washy, but sure, yeah. support you, at least Andrew Ben Steele. His service is just not what John's used to be, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but buy from those guys. You know, there's tons of great lists out there. I'm sure I'm forgetting some. There's the Italia one. There's yeah, GBI. And it seems like, but, uh, not I guess, right. not the time to buy Russian steel, but uh, <laughs> yeah, some Russian ones. Um, but yeah, there's Italy. There's, you know, a lot of other lists that are, great to be on and obviously all of horn stuff you know I, I don't love all horns little tiny wraps because that's just, I just not my style but yeah. uh, he does have a million great lists and great achievements and great um and he has a he has a gold uh I don't know if replica is the right word but a, a gold length and diameter bar I think it's maybe in a, even a little thicker and that's the people who have done that unbraced are on the grip feet list and stuff oh cool yeah that's right I forgot he does have that yeah I think it is it's probably 10 mil. So that is a little thicker than three eights, three eights to yep. nine, three, four, something like that. So yeah, so, I, I don't have too much else to say. I mean, I'm just disappointed and uh, yeah, I'm a little fun. angry that this all happened. Um, yeah. I feel a little bad because I'm sure it was partially my fault for being such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be interesting to see like, how it would have unfolded in another way you know like i, I just like i think there may, there might have been or there is an effort to keep it as this thing that hasn't been done you know what i mean or it cer certainly seems like it so it would have been interesting to see how strict they were on another person that may maybe doesn't have the history with them um if if someone else had completed the gold you know who kn who knows yeah and i'm curious like i I don't know that anyone talks to Alex Klimovich enough or understands his language well enough to know the reason he never started on the gold. Yeah. I'm yeah. Because there's a video Jan sent me. I'm sure a lot of people have seen it, um, you know, three, four years ago, something like that, where he did the gold with no chalk on the wraps. Like it was just like <laughs> slick blue wraps, which I'm like, Ugh. Yeah. and like crushed it like faster than my bend. I mean, wow. it didn't add, so I'd say he's probably better than me. Um, and I'm just, I'm just surprised he never did it. I don't know if it was because that was the spiral golds or maybe Randy pulled some bullshit with him at that point. Yeah. I mean, who knows? your point, I'm, I'm curious if that, if he had a similar reaction with Randy maybe, or yeah. if it was, you know, maybe he did do the old spirals and never actually got one of the, uh, the new ones. I mean, the way he yeah. made that was so easy makes me question, but he is also super strong and been bad. So who knows? Um, yeah, that's, that's all I have for now. If I think there's something else on the goal, I'll tell you at the end. All right, cool. So you're working with the trainer, it seems like, yeah. right? Yeah. So let's let's talk about that a little bit. Cause obviously you're always super strong, but you know, like you were chasing the 12.9 for a while and then you did a freaking cut down 12.9. So what has changed in your training besides spacing out the workouts uh, uh, with multiple weeks in between, which I also think is a great idea. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm training with Sam Parker, um, great grip and strong and trainer. I don't know, he's he's still pretty active in grip. He's one of the probably strongest, maybe the strongest pincher in the world. He's going after 345 right now, which is just a stupid, stupid feat. And he also has this, um, I don't know if I should tell, this might be a secret, but he has a 100 pound hub that he's trying to lift, but it's like so stupid thin <laughs> and wide. I don't know if he'll ever do it. He's doing it with like banded uh, negatives. Okay. It's just silly, but so he's super strong and uh, was the first Brit to ever total a thousand kilos in powerlifting, which is 2,200 pounds. So yeah. obviously a huge, um, but never really did bending, but he was, he was sort of into bending way back in my day. Uh -huh. um, like, you know, 0809, I don't think he ever started the red 
partially just because he's fucking huge. He's like six foot, like 330. <laughs> might have been at his biggest. Now he's probably a little thinner. In fact, that was back in his roid days. But um, so I wasn't really sure about approaching him, but I had, I had talked to like Aaron about coaching and he never got back to me. He's got his own stuff going on and Paul uh-huh. was way busy. And I was trying to find somebody that like would be in like someone I could learn from, I guess, you know, no yeah. disrespect to a lot of other people, but it's when you're at the top of the sport and bending, it's kind of finding the the person that knows something you don't. Um, and I think Sam was a nice contrast because he really understands strength in general and he still has a good understanding of grip. Um, uh-huh. So we um, put in just a lot of uh, weight training has honestly been the biggest uh, gain for me. I don't, I'm curious how other people would have an, a, a in a similar program, how other people's experience would be. Because for me, it was just that, you know, the the tendon strength was there, the form was there, but I didn't have the um, strength in like my upper body and my overall strength. And I think I was just over training and didn't have too much consistency. Like I was doing max effort bending every week. And then my in-between workouts were just kind of like fucking around more or less. Mm -hmm. Um, And my consistency honestly still leaves something to be uh, desired. So I've had some injuries and sicknesses and stuff that have kind of left me a little over, all over the place. But uh, yeah, to be honest, I'm doing um, two upper body sessions a week, um, lower body in the middle of the week, and then like squats usually before bending. And then, like I said, it's only max effort bending like every four to six weeks, sometimes three weeks um and then the rest is like volume so depending on what cycles like with the iron mine pads it was all like five to ten bends at 60 to 80 percent depending on the week and the progression um gotcha. with the double pads it was still some of that but also a lot of isometrics um you know gripper chest crushes just different things mixed in that have really helped push me past that uh um plateau because I was kind of at that 12.9 for a long time. I right. Didn't quite get there. Now, the squats before bending, is that just to charge up your whole system? And how, like how percentage-wise, like how heavy are you going, how many reps and stuff like that? Generally, yes. So like it, that depends on um, the week. So obviously if I'm doing um, like what high volume, low intensity bending, then my squats are a little heavier. But okay. generally there, and obviously if I'm doing max effort band, like the red nail, I topped out at uh, 225 that day for a double, which my well squat, um, three, my best I've done in squats now is 385, I think. So nice. 60% ish, not doing okay. the math. Um, so yeah, mostly lower intensity, just getting the, the body warmed up versus before I was just kind of doing bending to warm up. It's interesting. So, uh, I used to do that back in the day. I hadn't, I, I kind of fucked around with it by myself, but it wasn't, wasn't a regular part of my program. And I think it has helped. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Now you said he's a grip guy. Are you doing any specific grip training or no? Um, yeah, I do. I'm doing some pinch. I do a lot of axle work. Yeah. And some axle deadlifts and a lot, okay. some accessories with the axle, like RDLs and rows nice. and things like that. And yeah. um, like thick handle, um, hammer curls for high reps, mm-hmm. um, lever, like a lot of lever work mixed in. I've always believed in lever work, but Sam's made it more regular part of my training, which I think has helped too. Cool. Uh, so, yeah. Cause it's like, I think people, or at least this is my opinion, it's like bending sort of like in the grip world, like all my jujitsu friends are like, see me bend and steal. And they're like, oh, your grip's going to be crazy when I come back. And it, then after actually doing it a while and stuff, it was like, I feel like bending is kind of a different thing than grip. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't even know if it really helps your grip all that much. What do you think? About it? Yeah, I think they are. I, mean, I think you use your grip in bending, but there's no grip activity, like a grip sport lift that really has a direct carryover from bending. I think there is stuff that carries over to bending, mm. uh, but going from bending and trying to say like what lift would get better at. I mean, besides maybe levers, which isn't uh-huh. really tested much. Right. Um, I don't think it carries over. I think, I mean, there probably is some, for your perspective, some carryover, because I think when you're doing, you know, bending and, and grabbing onto something at a, a high intensity, I think that can carry over to you know, grabbing onto a, a G or you know, whatever. Of course, my yeah. knowledge of jujitsu is very minimal. Yeah, yeah. 
my perspective and um, yeah, view from having knowledge and bending. But I'd say they definitely are different. Um, they're different sides of the same coin, I guess. Right? They're, mm -hmm. They definitely complement each other to an extent, but. Yeah. Interesting. And you're only doing one lower body a session a week? So you're doing squats or deadlifts? In it? Like, I do squats and deadlifts. So they're- well, Squats and deadlifts. Okay. Yeah, most of my deadlift stuff right now isn't um, max deadlifts. It's max axle deadlifts. Mm -hmm. So it's more targeting grip versus like beating the shit out of my upper back. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then I do within squats on bending day, but it's mostly lower intensity. Kind of cool. And targeting, working on form. Any um, uh, plans to get back into some strong man or powerlifting? I, I know you've done some in the past. Yeah, I want to do a powerlifting comp probably this summer, I'm hoping. I haven't done one since COVID just because I don't really feel like competing with the mask on. Um, yeah. But I'm this summer, and I don't know if they'll lift that by then. Who knows? Um, but they usually have them at this gym near me, and yeah. I wanted to get to the bar. Um, so, yeah, I, I am planning on hopefully doing a powerlifting comp in July. I'd like to up I'm my trying, trying my hand at one in May, actually, oh. May 22nd, uh, the USAPL one. Okay, so, that's mine as well, USAPL. Yeah, it's a good fed. Yeah, strict for sure, but that's I guess be be strict is better. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to keep my damn feet flat on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> that is a downside. USAPL they have your flat feet. Mm -hmm. But um, all right, before we get out of here, I want to ask. So clearly, when you're hit, when you're going through the bar, there's a moment when you know you have it. I can see it, and you smile all evil. Like you, you like, you're almost through the bar and then you smile. Is that you're just like, all right, I have this thing like this. Uh, I'm going to basically I've, I'm, a, I'm losing audio here. What the hell is going on? You got me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. I cut I out for a minute. The, I heard the, I heard the very start and that was about it. Oh, weird. Um, sorry about that. So. Anyway, I was saying when I watch you bend, especially for the max effort stuff, there's a moment where you smile all evil. And is that, <laughs> is that just when you know you, you, you've won, basically, you've completed the bar? Um, is that like on the initial kink? No, I don't oh. think I've ever noticed that on myself. Is that oh, just yeah. You pause before the, um, before the crush, maybe one hit into the crush, and you do a smile like the Joker or something like that, and you just like stare off into space. And I think it's where you're like, okay, th this is it's done. Like you just know you're finishing it. You got to watch it. I'm gonna have to watch my own videos now. <laughs> I usually watch my videos for form critiques, but I've never. <laughs> now, now I'm losing your audio. Goodness. All right, hopefully he comes back here. Sorry, everybody. Always there. And sometimes, you know, that first hit, you have a little bit of doubt or you try to kick it out, but there's that little seed of it. So yeah, I'd say that's when I just, I'm at, I'm at that finishing stage and I just know that thing's going down. Yeah. Usually yeah. around like 2.75 inches. I can feel it pretty well uh, when you get this level of bending uh, that right. I know that that thing's not going to last any longer. Like bends do not... They rarely fail inside of two and two and three quarter inches. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I had to show the rest of my shirt before we get out of here too. I don't know if you can clearly see all of it. I can see a good portion of it there. <laughs> okay. well, can I show the rest? Are you, yeah, are you right there? Yeah. I actually made this right before we got on camera. Because I was like, this is, I, I got this shirt on clearance because my old one, I threw away a long time ago before I discontinued them. So, all right. The start of the top it says RIP Red Nail Roster 3 3 2022. <laughs> Gray Bill Rules, Goat. And then it says former Red Nail Roster at the top. I don't know if you can yeah, see that. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> Randy, fuck Iron Mind. So that's gotcha. it. <laughs> nice stuff. <laughs> but uh, I, I am curious if anyone has opinions on if I should go for another like unofficial cert attempt. I, I really have gone back and forth on this because like since that tear, I'll post a picture on Instagram. The tear was probably three skin layers deep. The one that I had uh, going after the second pre-certification. 
Mm -hmm. So since that, I, like the pain tolerance in the lower, I've been trying to rebuild that callus and you can still probably see the left finger is oh, yeah. thinner. Yeah, I do. Angel margin. So I don't know, I've been waffling on that and I'm curious your opinion to anyone else's who listen. I don't think it, personally, I don't think it needs to be done again. Oh, why are we getting this wacky audio stuff? I lost you. <laughs> Hang on. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah, I, I can hear you too. So you mentioned you had uh, you had one goal that you were going to say at the end. So let's let me tell you. Uh, let's hear about that and let's get out of here before the audio gives up again. One goal is that we said? Yeah, I think you said you you had something planned, like a next big uh, feat or something. Well, my next big feat was like is that I'm just debating if I want to do. I post about that with the new rule change about doing oh, like okay. an live with uh like a gold nail open on camera and or just one of the ones i already have to do another cert i mean yeah. for like for double wraps i'm really debating where i next want to go at some point i want to get back into um, like reverse and brace and that sort of thing just to um get better all around and find the double underhand list because man delmar has beat me by a lot um, yeah. <laughs> um so i wanted to back into those things at some point but double over i'm just trying to figure out if uh, I mean, the Gaza bolt is the the biggest goal on my to do list. That's a yep. little ways off. It has a little wobble, has a tiny little wobble. Right. Wow. The uh, the three eighths by seven grade five. For those who don't know, I, I don't know if it's ever been calibrated, but it's probably over nine hundred pounds. That's yeah. seven. Inches. Um, and I, I wanted debating cutting down the twelve nine further, but I don't really know where my next goal is. Honestly, double over. You know, the the gold was that, and that's been taken for me. So <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out my next step. Yeah. All right, man. Well, th this is fun. It was, <laughs> appreciate you coming on and I look forward to uh, seeing what you do next, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me on and thanks for staying up late for me. It's been a blast and uh, yeah, wish all the best to everybody out there. All right, Derek. Take it easy, man. You too. Bye.